here this morning. Amen. 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 Praise God for our worship team. Amen. Go old school here. Go back. Amen. I hear people clapping on the twos. And... <laughs> like, okay. This, this sounds like a little bit what I grew up with. But uh, praise God for uh worship team. And, you know, as we uh, experience this first Sunday of the new year, um, we want to make sure that we uh, touch on taking Jesus into 2024. Amen. And uh, we're going to be in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 through 11, continuing our series in the book of Matthew, um, what we know as a triumphal entry. I want to read uh, just the first three verses and we'll pray. Matthew chapter 21. And it reads, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for just opportunity to worship you this morning, Lord, the opportunity to bow before your throne, Lord, and, and, and to give you honor and glory and praise and to recognize who you are as we engage with this first Sunday of the new year. Lord God, I pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds, Father God, that we would honor you in this new year, God, that we would honor you with our words and we would honor you, Lord, with our worship and Lord, honor you with our walk, Father God, that we we want to we want to be like Jesus, and so God, as we enter the new year, help us to be like Jesus. Pray, Father, you would use me, Lord, to your honor and your glory. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's funny that uh, I was going to open up talking about when I was growing up, uh, going to the dentist and the phlebotomist. Phlebotomist is the, the person that takes blood. But I see my mom here, and I remember mom taking me to the doctor and the fear and anxiety I had, some of it because of the known, what I knew, what I had experienced in the past. But a lot of it was the unknown. My fear, my anxiety got the best of me. And, and, and my mom will tell you, I was, I was afraid, I was fighting couldn't get my arm down. You trying to put a, a, a rubber thing around my arm. And I thought the needle was, was gigantic. I, the dentist just looked like a demon to me. It was just, it was a mess. But I remember those things. And, you know, it, it, it kind of taps into just this fear that we have as human beings of the unknown, of the unknown. We fear what we know, I mean, that, that plays in our mind, but also the unknown anxiety. And even as we consider going into 2024, we think about what happened in 2023, and if some of us have experienced some rough times in 2023, we wonder, man, what does 2024 have in store for us? But a lot of it is the unknown um, that as we head into uh, this new year. But I want to encourage you today as we look at this text of Scripture and, and, and it's going to be really clear that the most important thing that you can take into 2024 and the most important person that you can rely on in 2024 is Jesus. Amen. Don't begin this year. Don't continue this year. Don't finish this year without Jesus because he is in the year. He knows already what's coming up and he's preparing you for something. He's preparing us. But I, I praise God that Jesus sets the tone in our life and he... He, he goes into these unusual places in our text today. He enters Jerusalem, fully aware of what will take place in this upcoming week. Because as we look at Matthew chapter 21, and as we finish on through the book of Matthew, this is the, the, the triumphal entry where Jesus goes into Jerusalem, and he is going to offer himself to be sacrificed. He's going to experience many things in this next week. Um, he's going to be fulfilling his purpose, his mission coming into the world. And the reality is this. He knows what's forthcoming. He knows 
what this week contains for him. But yet Jesus goes into Jerusalem fully knowing, bold, and, and, and looking to do what is necessary to free you and I from the bondage of sin. Yeah. So here's the reality that Jesus rushes headlong to make the greatest sacrifice that the world has ever witnessed. He would suffer. He would be betrayed. He would go through all kinds of uh, difficulty and suffering on our behalf. But I love the fact that, that, that we celebrate this week. We look at this text and we see that Jesus goes into Jerusalem. But here's a reality, and this, is, this applies to us today. When Jesus enters into our world, that world may be uh, chaotic, but he brings order. That, that world may be full of conflict, but Jesus, when he enters into our world, he brings peace. Yes. We may be experiencing a whole lot of disorder and mayhem in our life, but Jesus brings direction. Anywhere that Jesus shows up, he's going to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to make a difference. It, it, there's going to be a change. He doesn't do neutral. Uh -huh. He doesn't do neutral. And, and so as Jesus arrives in Jerusalem, he puts God's enemies on notice. They're all on notice. The enemy, the devil's on notice. The Pharisees, the religious leaders, they're on notice. And I want to encourage you as, you, as you, as you consider 2024, understand who you are representing and who is with you as you navigate 2024. Go with Jesus. As we think about these first couple of verses, there are three things that I want to encourage you to do as you consider 2024, as you enter. There's three activities I want you to, to consider doing. The first one is be obedient as you head into a fresh year. Be obedient. Now, we don't like that word obedience, do we? I ain't no little kid. I'm just talking about obedience. But be obedient. Let's look and see what the text says. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage. Jesus sent two disciples, and he says, go and, 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 and go ahead, and you will find a donkey tied there with her cold. Untie them, bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them. Obedience. Jesus calls his disciples, and he says, I want you to be obedient to me. Go, and, 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 and remember, you will see a donkey and a colt, the, the, the foal, the child of the donkey, tied up. And, and tell them that the Lord needs them. If I'm a disciple, I'm like, um, do you know this person? Have you set things up beforehand? Because you're sending me on this assignment here. But the reality is, is that God sets up appointments on our calendars that are a must do. And he says, hopefully he sets your calendar, but he, he told these two disciples, he gave them an assignment in preparation for him entering the city. Go give me a donkey and a coat and bring them to me. That was God's assignment to them. It wasn't a nice to do. It wasn't an option, but it was something that he had declared to them. Go, this is on your to do list. Yeah. And here's the reality in 2024. Guess what? You may have a calendar that you have set up. You took some time. You said, this is how my 2024 is going to go. I'm on vacation in all of July. I got, the, you know, this wedding here. I got friends, all of that. You got all that. Guess what? God can come in and change it because he has an agenda. He has assignments for you. And here's reality that you may not know about. He's got something he wants to task you that he's been preparing you for that you don't have a clue about. And my encouragement to you as you head into 2024 is to be obedient when the assignment shows up. Be obedient when the assignment shows up. Here's the reality. What does it look like to walk in disobedience as a Christian? You know what it looks like? It, it can look like a Christian who is extremely comfortable. They attend, they worship. But some Christians are, are comfortable with putting God's assignments to the side because it may require too much of them. See, the reality is that we don't grow without the test. We don't grow without the challenges. We don't grow without the assignments that God put 
puts in front of us and says, look, I'm tasking you to do this. You may not understand fully all that I'm doing, but I want you to go get the donkey and get the foal and bring them to me. And if they ask about it, tell them that I said the Lord needs them. And he said, oh, Jesus, you're talking real bold there, but I got this. Me and my man, we're going into this and... and Man, you, could you imagine the embarrassment, the, the reluctance, the risk that it takes oftentimes to follow God? But we have to understand something, that God's must-to-do list always comes with resources. God never sends us to do a task that he hasn't already prepared the way for. In fact, here's the thing is, God, had, Jesus could have gotten a, a, a donkey and a colt from anywhere. But, but he's sending them to do something as a test, as an obedience, something to strengthen their faith, to fulfill all that the Father had prepared, right? So we got to understand something that, that, that we have to take obedience into 2024 and that God has already prepared the way for us as we walk in it. We are not uh, designed to do this thing called the Christian life alone. In John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Here's the thing. Apart from me, you can't do nothing. Amen. Apart from me, you can't do nothing. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. So God's to-do list comes with power. To do. As simple as that. As simple as that. We consider Moses, Moses was given an assignment to, to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses, all he looked on and looked at was his deficiencies, what he couldn't do. But God had already gone before and told Moses, don't worry about what you will say. I will give you what you need to say at the moment. That's what you need to do. God resources those who are willing to obey him to go to do the way, to do his purposes in the earth. God given authority. It says the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. You can't grab a hold of that. The Lord needs them. That was their response. They are going, fulfilling God's purpose for them in that moment to go be obedient, to do what he told them to do. And their response to whomever they came in contact with was the Lord's need, the Lord needs them. And he will send them right away. Have you ever stepped out on faith to do something that God called you to do, but you couldn't see it? You couldn't, I don't see how this is going to work. Does he know who I am? Does he know my weaknesses? Does he know my past? Does he know my deficiencies? Does he know that I'm scared? Does he know all this stuff? And we can get so self-consumed that we become paralyzed when it comes to doing God's will. When it comes to following his directive. See, the kingdom of God waits for no one. It's expanding. The plan of redemption is unfolding. And man, I want to be a part of that plan of redemption. I want to be a part of what God is doing in the earth. And, and here's the thing. It would be a risk that whomever the, the, these disciples are going uh, to, to request uh, the donkey and the, the foal from. See, animals were like currency. They were a representation of wealth. It was their possession. And so it would be a risk for that individual to give them up. But here there is no deterrence. They bring this cult to Jesus and, and we're going right away. See, what will the year bring your way? We don't know. It's the unknown. Yeah. But what you do know is that God is a provider. Yeah. What you do know is that he will never leave you or forsake you. What you do know is you can never be separated from the love of God. What you do know is faith without works is dead. you got to take what you know into the unknown. Man, it's, it's so important that we follow clear instructions from God. See, we can find ourselves looking for loopholes. You ever hear about a loophole life? 
that everything that God brings your way, every assignment that God brings your way, you are very good. You could be very good at finding loopholes around what he has said, the clear instructions of God. The loopholes. I'm, I'm busy. I, I don't know that he's actually saying that. I, he didn't come down in my living room and speak to me. I don't know what that preacher is talking about. I hear the words, but right now, I don't know. I don't know. And some people love living in that gray space, the loophole that I can kind of sidestep God's will again and again and again because God ain't really talking to me directly. God's not giving me assignments. Man, everybody in the body of Christ has an assignment. Yeah. We've all got tasks. We've all got something that he's called us to do that is difficult, that's going to stretch us beyond what we're comfortable with. But, but God is still calling us. That, that assignment doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go to spam. It, it doesn't auto-delete. There is no out-of-office. God doesn't pay attention to your out-of-office notifications. You can send him a voicemail all you want. He's still calling. It's like, yo, who? I, you know, folks be calling all times of night, and you look, and I go, how did they get my number? Well, you signed up for something online somewhere. Or somebody sold your information, and they just keep calling. They just keep calling. And you make a mistake one time, and you answer the phone. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. But the reality is that to, to be obedient, man, I want to encourage you that as you head into 2024, obedience is something that, that, that God desires of you. God desires obedience. Let's move on. Verses 4 to verse 7, it says, um, that, that the Lord needs them right. Verse 3, if anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. Verse 4, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. In Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, say to the daughters of Zion, see, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the full of a donkey. Uh, the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat, placed the cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. And here we see this picture of humility because here it was prophesied by the prophet Zechariah that Jesus would come as this king, but he's coming on a donkey. Not the traditional way that a king would come into a place, a conquering king, but he comes in this meek, this gentle and humble way. I want to encourage you that we want to emulate what Jesus demonstrates here. As you head into the new year, I want you to be humble. Yeah. Humble, humility. Yeah. It's, it's in short demand, it's, it's in short supply. Yeah. I know around this, but humility, I want to encourage you that, that, that we ought to always be humble as we head to do God's will. Because when we are humble, we are mirroring, we are, we are uh, uh, following in the steps of Jesus. And humility requires that we understand that we are listening, that we are in tune with God. See, humility is the act of self-denial in favor of God's will at his best. It is, it is an act of self-denial in favor of God's will at his best. Jesus demonstrates humility again and again and again. He enters Jerusalem his way. Yeah. See, they wanted him to enter on a horse with a conquering army, but Jesus came humbly in meekness and gentleness because his work would require that very thing. See, the donkey was a, a beast of burden. As it says that in the NIV, the animal was distinguished. It was a work beast. It was an, a, a, an animal that was used for the field, not necessarily for grand processions into a city that a conquering general in the Roman Empire would do. They would enter on a horse to show victory. Yeah. But Jesus comes humbly and that ought to demonstrate something. That ought to be something that we want to emulate. See, there would be ultimate majesty, but Jesus had work to do. <laughs> Jesus had work to do. And coming in on the donkey showed that he had work to do. See, Jesus and his kingdom it, 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 the triumph is through different means. See, the reality is this, that Jesus could have called down legions of angels and had destroyed all of his enemies, Jerusalem. He could have done that. 
He says in Matthew chapter 26, verses 53 to 54, after Peter had cut off the ear of those who had come. Later on in this week, Peter had cut off the ear of those who had come to collect Jesus, to take Jesus captive. And Jesus' response to Peter was, do you think that I cannot call my father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? So when Jesus talks about, I could have called down 12 legions of angels, a legion of soldiers was 5,200 soldiers that was at his beck. And, but these are angelic things. He could have called down a, a, a host, heavenly host, down to his cause to wreck shop. But Jesus chose not to do that. He could have, but he chose not to do that. That's the definition of humility. Yeah. Humility that we could, but we resist because character is so much more important than winning. <laughs> Jesus informs Peter it's about humility and power, but 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 here, man, this is the lesson that we need to know that that as Jesus, if there was ever someone who demonstrated humility, it was him. He veiled his power. Jesus came from heaven to earth, put on flesh. And then humbled himself and became obedient to the Father's will. And he lived among men and women, the sick, the poor, those who were destitute, those who were marginalized, in order to fulfill God's will in the earth. See, Peter understood that lesson eventually as he lived among Jesus. And he says this in 1 Peter when Peter was older and more mature. 1 Peter 5, 6, he says, humble yourselves. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. I want to tell you something. And, and, and James, the brother of Jesus says in James chapter 4, verse 6, but he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Man, I'm going to tell you, you cannot lose being humble. Yeah. You may see someone, pomp and circumstance, that, that someone that, 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 that's about uh, personal ambition and, and, and they are, that they want the spotlight. I want to tell you that God is opposed to that person. I've seen person again and again. Me and Pastor to talk about this all the time. When we see people again and again who want to flex and, and show off and do all this thing that there, there is a fall coming down the line. As you enter 2024, I want to encourage you not only to be obedient, but practice humility. Take the low. You don't always have to respond. You don't always have to get the glory. You don't always have to get the applause. But humility for us is looking to do kingdom work without applause of others, without manipulation, without politicization, without ambition, ambition vain glory. One of the greatest practices or postures of humility is prayer. Yes. See, see, when, when, when you have a strong prayer life, it demonstrates humility. Because you are always, you know that the source of what you need to do is not within you. That you need to cry out to the living God, God, I can't do, and I need you to help me to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's humility. You will not go wrong in 2024 if you practice humility. Yeah, man. You take the low, sidestep. They want to cuss you out? God bless you. Have a good day. I'm going to pray for you. But not only that, let us move on in verse number nine, that here Jesus um, is fulfilling Zechariah's prophecy, and, and he gets on this colt, and he gets on the donkey, and, and this colt is following behind, and verse number eight says, and a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And here the third thing I want to encourage you to do that we've already done this morning. I want to encourage you to be ready to worship as you head into the new year. Amen. Be ready to worship 
As Jesus entered Jerusalem, the crowds rejoiced and acknowledged that he was king. They acknowledged his kingship as a conscious decision. They, they, they were doing, they were worshiping. And, and we'll examine the crowd because this was a fickle crowd because here at this point, they're worshiping. Hosanna, Hosanna. They're acknowledging his kingship. They're worshiping and, and but this is a fickle crowd because this same crowd down later on in the week would turn on Jesus. Crucify him. Crucify. We choose him. We choose Barabbas over him. But I love, you know, we could critique them, but the fact that they worship, they took the opportunity to worship is something that we don't always do. And so oftentimes we're concerned about the how of worshiping rather than the why of worshiping. Man, worship how God leads you to worship. Amen. We are here, and, and, and even as I sat in my seat, I, I looked out and I saw how people were worshiping, and, and some people were, were silently worshiping. Some people were getting loud. And that's okay. That's okay. But the fact is, my hope is that you have honored the King of Kings and the Lord, the Lord of Lords, that you have recognized that, that you understood the assignment to worship so often time, man, I wish, as I look back at 2023, I wish when I was going through some things I didn't understand, some things that were difficult, that I actually paused and worshiped him. Because he is so much bigger than my circumstances. He's so much bigger than the disappointment from others. And, and, and we have to really wrap our minds around yeah. the fact that he is worthy. Yeah. He's worthy. We say that so often. But is he worthy? Because if he was worthy, we would worship him whenever we had opportunity. Yeah. See, the crowd, yeah. they were fickled. Mm. Here they are worshiping him. Hosanna. They had loud music. They had the band. They had tambourines. Yeah. They had it all. Let's do it up real big. But I think they might have missed the why. They, they, might, have missed, they might have not understood. And they, they gave their small sacrifice. And, and hey, honor, they took their clothes off. And they put them on the road as Jesus walked by. As he walked by. And, and he rode on that road. And, and here is this, this um, the song that they're singing is out of Psalm 118, 24 to 26, 25 to 26. And it's a song that, that honors the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, honors Jesus, Hosanna. The whole idea that that word is, oh, save me, save us. They were, they were crying out for deliverance from, from Jesus. They understood who he was and they were worshiping him, but they failed to obey him later on. See, the crowd changes with the seasons. Sheep are like that. They change from Sunday to Sunday and, and week to week and day to day. They follow the crowd. Wherever the noise is, they run the opposite way. Wherever they are following, there, there's no distinct leader. They have to be led. But this crowd is so fickle. And I want to encourage you as a believer, don't fall into that trap in 2024 of being led astray by so many things. That being so desirous that to fit in, to be comfortable with the crowds, to get more likes, to get more views. My prayer is that your life is not reduced to like views and comments and the approval of others because that's what the crowd was. See, I wonder if Jesus was their true King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Did Jesus really matter in their life? We're going to ignore that. <laughs> that we're ready to do that in 20 years. That man, be ready to worship. Man, I was really encouraged. I they the, the praise team was these were songs that I grew up on. I'm like, hey, I, I know that. We, I sang that. They forced me to sing that when I was growing up. I was dragged to choir rehearsal. We were singing. That, I wouldn't drag my own. I, I was just, I was just <laughs> But the reality is this, man. When Jesus enters a place, when he enters Jerusalem, 
The whole idea behind him entering Jerusalem is that he is establishing his kingdom on earth. He is establishing his rule and reign. And see, the reality is this, there are strongholds in our lives where we are both the king and queen. And we rule things. And Jesus comes in and he wants to wreck shop. He does not share his glory with anyone. He doesn't share his authority with anyone. He's there. He's knocking at the door. He says to a group of believers in Revelation 3.20, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Jesus doesn't force himself on anyone, but he does compel us to come to him and to give up everything for his kingdom. When Jesus is coming into Jerusalem, he's coming, he's inviting them to worship, he's coming presenting himself to be made a sacrifice. He is meek and he is gentle. But don't take that meekness and that gentleness for granted. See, because Jesus actually comes as a conquering king. He came first to Jerusalem on a donkey, gentle and meek, but the reality is that this Jesus, whom we serve, who went through this week and allowed himself to be betrayed, to be put on a cross, to be whipped, to be mocked, was taken off that cross, put in a grave. He, he was raised again, resurrected from the dead yeah. and lives in glory. But he is coming back. Yes. Yes. And see, the reality is that we may misunderstand, but that Jesus is coming back, not in the same way. Jesus is coming back and he is bringing judgment with him. He's bringing salvation with him. He is going to set things in order. And for those who are not prepared for his second coming, there are consequences. Thank God that we responded to this Jesus who compels us to come to him as we are. He's inviting us to come to him. He's coming meek and gentle. But that second coming is a coming of judgment. Judgment. What will you do with this Jesus? Verse number 10. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred or in an uproar and asked, who is this? You see that Jesus comes in and there is no neutrality. He, he disrupts the existing systems. He disrupts our life. He disrupts your life. Hopefully he has disrupted your life. If you say you know Jesus and you haven't had to arrange anything, you haven't had to stop anything, you haven't had to stop going some places, then you don't know Jesus. Come on. Because when Jesus comes into your life, he stirs up, he creates an uproar. The things that you used to do, you can't do them the same way. It doesn't taste the same. It doesn't smell the same. But Jesus comes in and he sets things in order. This Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee who came to save the world. This Jesus is the one, if you don't know him today, bow your heads and close your eyes. If you don't know him today, this Jesus is still compelling, still inviting you to come to him just as you are. Me, Jesus is not going to force his way, but he is inviting you to come just as you are. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, he's calling you, he's drawing you. You are here for a reason. I want to ask you to just respond to him if you're joining us online if you don't know this Jesus right here right now the gospel has been preached that he loves you with an everlasting love that he loved you so much that he went to Calvary's cross and paid the price for your sins and my sins he willingly allowed himself to be nailed to the cross he is our substitute he took your place you know that you deserve to die for your sins but Jesus experienced death for you and what Jesus wants to do if you come to him is transform your life. He wants to redeem, buy back. He wants to make you whole again. He wants to free you from bondage. Whatever it might be, he's calling you to come to him just as you are. If you're here today and you want to make a decision for Christ, 
You've never made a decision for Christ. You want to make a decision for Christ right here today. Just put your hand up. That's where you're at. He's calling. He's inviting. He loves you. He loves you. If you're joining us online and you're ready to make a decision for Christ, I ask you just to follow with me on these words and repeat these words. I am a sinner and deserve the punishment for my sin. I believe that Jesus paid the penalty for my sin. I ask for God's forgiveness. I will follow Jesus and confess him as my Lord and Savior. I receive the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ today. If you've prayed that prayer, I want you to just text 267-991-8907. That's 267-991-8907. We want to communicate with you as you begin this new journey, new life in Christ. Jesus wants to come into your life and to make all things new. He wants to change the direction of your life if you would say yes to him. I want to encourage you in 2024, be obedient, be humble, and be ready to worship. Amen. Amen.